Hey everybody, it's David Bob from Outside Our Bubble. And hey, today we're gonna to talk about something. That being, we're gonna talk about making sure that you select the right access point when you're using your nano station, your private network setup that you may have built uh, from my tutorial. And that is using your nano station and making sure you select the right access point. And you're saying, well, Dave, you told me, you know, just sort the list and click and click on the first one you see there that's sorted out because that's by signal strength and that's true however that doesn't always mean it's the best access point for you i'm going to explain real quick here hopefully um why that might be and why you might want to check a few other access points because you never know the access point you might be on there might be 10 other people on it which means it'll slow things down for you you can select another access point even though the signal might not be as good you might get better performance because there's less people using it or there's less noise around it. So those are things that also come into play. So let me show you what I mean here real quick. So I'm gonna bring up our display here and log in to um, our nano station. And well, in this case, I'm, lo I'm actually logging into, um, I'm actually logging into a Bullet M2, which is the same thing, made by the same company, UBNT. You notice AeroS and everything. So this is the same as what you're used to seeing, but this is um, not a nano station. So this is an omnidirectional antenna. So basically you would then normally go into your wireless and you would then select your access point. As you can see, I've already selected an access point here and I've also locked it to the access point. So it doesn't jump to another one. That's important because you don't want your access point jumping around because you can lose connection if that happens. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm already on one and I'm just gonna pop up a speed test screen here that I have ready to go. And we're gonna run a quick speed test. Everybody's under, everybody knows what the speedtest.net is for the most part. So use your flavor of choice for speed operating tests or throughput operating tests and go from there. Um, so what I'm doing right now, oh, looks like we got a problem there. Eh. Let's try again, shall we? Let's see what's going on here. Make sure we still got a connection, which we do, but for some reason, oh, there we go. Okay, ah, hey, this is, you see what happens when you do things live? Any case, um, I'm also gonna see the, 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 here at Jellystone Night Park where I am, we're on, we're on the AT&T network. So I'm actually going to tell this to use, well, it already chose it. It chose AT&T as the server. So, because you can choose whatever server you want to connect to, and that makes a difference because different servers will have different speed throughputs based on how heavy they're loaded or where they're located uh, in the country, for that matter. So we'll see if we get a speed test here. Hopefully we will. Hello. There we go. And the speed test will start, hopefully, now or now or now or not it's going it's just not doing anything oh look at that so what i'm showing you right now obviously is the throughput is not that great i'm actually on the website but i'm getting really bad throughput and that was because the access point i had chosen now there's many access points in this in this in this rv park and because of that I have the advantage of being able to choose another access point. Now, the one I currently could be on right now, A, like I said, could have a lot of other people on it streaming or doing whatever, which is then gonna limit my amount of bandwidth that I could use, or it's gonna have a lot of noise around it. It just, uh, just obviously you can see, it doesn't even like this one very much. I could have a lot of noise around it. So what I mean by that is, let's go back to the bullet screen here, or the nano station. Let's do a select to search for your to search for an access point. And I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. And you'll see that it's going to find a lot of access points in the air. And you'll see a lot of Jellystone ones because there it is a big park. So there's a number of access points. Now your computer, if you ask your computer to show you the access points, it's not going to show you all the different ones. It's just going to show you the show you the SSIDs. Here you can see Jellystone Management, which is the network I'm using. Jellystone management, it only shows you one, but over here, if you look, there's multiple Jellystone managements because each one of them is a separate access point and every access point has a different MAC address associated with it, as you can see, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to find another access point. I'm gonna sort it by signal, first and foremost, that's the easiest way to go. And 
sometimes it the, the one that you're on is not the best the one that, the one at the top might not be the best one it was selected so I'm now going to switch over to use this one for example even though it's further down on the list now let's see what happens I'm going to choose this Jellystone management it's further down on the list from this one I'm going to say lock to AP which sets it right here change of course you guys know how to do this if you use my system apply now that's going to reboot the radio or not reboot the entire radio it's just going to re-establish the communication with the new AP so I'm just going to switch back over to the main tab so I can see right here see the connection come up and as soon as it does then we'll be able to run our speed test there you go so we got a connection now and we're seeing um, everything is looking really good as far as that goes I'm going to go ahead and run this speed test we'll reload the page here and I'll make sure I grab AT&T again so um, see right now it went to somewhere else I'm going to change the server so I'm on the same server so there's no hocus pocus going on so there's the Richardson AT&T server so if I run this test now you'll see that um, and I just heard the car door so Brenda's home so she'll be coming in the door in a second um, any case we're gonna run the speed test and we should see an improvement there it is look at the improvement large improvement and this is because I didn't choose the access point that was right there in the beginning I chose the access point that's different which could result in a better experience which is exactly what's happening right now as you can see I'm doing much better than I did just a few seconds ago with the other access point and I chose a different one and that's very important um, so in any case, this is, this is why it's a good idea to try more than one access point, make sure you lock to it, and then run a speed test because things can, uh, can improve greatly as you see here. And by the way, before I go any further, I want to show you one more thing that will really blow your mind. This is 2.4 gigahertz. This is uh, um, what most people use. I'm going to show you what happens when I switch over to a 5 gigahertz AC radio, a 5 gigahertz AC radio. So um, I'll be right back because I have to go run and make a connection change real quick. Oh, Brenda's back, by the way. <laughs> Hi, hon. Okay, so here I am. Oh, so now I'm just waiting for the network to bring up the, uh, I switched radio. So basically the radio that I just switched to is booting up right now. So in a second, we'll be able to um, go in and run another speed test. But this time the speed test is gonna be across a five gigahertz AC connection. Okay, this is, you hear me talk about 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. 5 gigahertz has less noise in the air um, than 2.4 because everything runs on 2.4. Every cell phone has 2.4. Every tablet has 2.4. Your microwave oven puts out 2.4 gigahertz when you're running it. So it makes for a lot of noise. And um, because of that, you have obviously issues that can come from that. As I just showed, uh, you know, noise issues. So here we are. This is a normal connection in this RV park. Um, now I'm going to connect to the park using 5 gigahertz AC and uh, we'll see what happens here. Let me just see if we're connected yet. I got to wait for the system to connect up. So it might take a moment. So just give me one second hopefully here. Bum, ba -dum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. I think that was my phone beeping telling me we lost the internet connection which would be true obviously we did because I unplugged it and plugged it back in so I think it's gonna come back though hopefully here and then uh, and then when it does I'll just show you this last little thing oh, there we go all good now and now okay so now real quick okay it's still on AT&T here so let me blow your mind you ready here we go this is what this park is actually capable of First the ping test, and now the speed. That's right, you're seeing 140 and climbing. 150 megabits per second. This is what the difference between 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz can do for you. Pretty cool, huh? Now, not that you're gonna get that because if an RV park is done correctly, they're gonna limit your speeds, that's for sure. But this RV park has a maximum of 400 megabits down and 400 megabits up. And as you can see, 
I'm pushing through the air and my connection's just over a quarter mile away, by the way. I'm pushing 154 megabits down and I'm pushing 151 megabits up. So it's pretty amazing what you can do with the five gigahertz radio. Now, again, most RV parks, you will not be able to have that, that, that will not be a reality for you because it's a reality for me because I manage this park. So therefore I can get onto the management system. If I was to be on the guest system, I would be limited to 15 megabits max. So, but I wanted to show you amazingly the differences that it could make between the two different spectrums, all because of noise and not just noise, but a five gigahertz radio wave can carry more data overall than a 2.4 gigahertz wave. But five gigahertz trade-off is it doesn't penetrate things very well. If anything gets in the way, it really gets destroyed. It really kills the signal because it just, it's not a big, it's not a big wavelength which can penetrate through things. It's a smaller wavelength. So it collides with things that it doesn't get through very well. But there, I just hope I blew your mind and I hope it explains a little bit more about why choosing the correct access point is important and why you want to test a few of them before you just settle on the first one you see. Hope this makes sense. I'm Dave Fott, and if you like what I do, please click subscribe. If you don't, well, don't click subscribe. What can I say? <laughs> In any case, I'll let you go. My wife just got home. I got to see what she bought. Take care. Keep safe. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye. No one's data speed was hurt during the making of this video. <clears throat> Who am I kidding? <laughs>